Hello, my name is Marleni, and today we are going to be finding common denominators for fraction pairs. And Ms. Sylvia is going to present the lesson for us. Hello, my name is Sylvia, and in finding common denominators for fraction pairs, what we're going to do is show you how to do that. And the way that we do that is by finding the multiples of numbers. Now the reason that we do that, let's start off just a little refresher, that when you're adding fractions, which I'm sure you've done in the previous lessons, for example, one-third plus one-third, we know that the denominators are the same. And when the denominators are the same, we're just adding them. The numerators are added to two, and the denominators stay the same. However, when the denominators are different, it's not that easy. You have one-third and one-fourth. Well, we can't just add those because, as we've learned, the denominators are different and we have to have like denominators. And what we're going to learn in this lesson is how to find like denominators. And the way you do that is finding the multiples of the numbers. For example, what I'm going to show you real quick. Here you have the multiples through 9. You have the multiples of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And you would just continue that as far as you need it to go. And what we did is just an example of the numbers up to 9. 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, all the way up to 2 times 9. Same with 3, same with 4, same with 5, same with 6. And what I would suggest that until you're co comfortable with the multiples, make a chart of this and just keep it with you. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to find the multiples of 3 and 4. And just like our chart had, you're going to go ahead and go down the chart until you find a common denominator. So the denominator for 3 and the denominator for 4. So we know 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, and we know 3 times 4. We have 4 times 1, 4 times 2, 4 times 3, and we could keep going, but there's really no need to keep going because as I mentioned earlier, once you find your common denominator, then you can stop. Now, if you need it to keep going, you keep going. Now, in this case, our common denominator is 12. And what that means is what number is the lowest number that 3 and 4 can both multiply into? And that is how we find our common denominator. And in this case, we know that 3 goes into 12 and 4 goes into 12. Once you find that number, let's come over here, you're going to place the number on the screen. For example, it's 12 and 12. Now, how do we change the denominators of 3 and 4 to 12? And the way to do that is what you do to one, you do to the other. So you need a whole number that is going to make both of these numbers 12. Well, we already know that for 4, in order to make it 12, it was 3. So our whole number 3, we're going to times that by 3 over 3, which is 4 times 3 is 12, and 1 times 3 is 3. Now we have converted 1 fourth to a common denominator of 12. What you do to one side, you do to the other side. Now let's do the same up here. Now how did we get 3 to 12? 3 times what gave us 12? It was 4. And if you're unsure, just count down. 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, and 3 times 4. So again, we're taking the whole number as before. 3 times 4 gave us 12. And 1 times 4? gives us four. Now we have like 
denominators. And once you have the like denominators, then you can add the numerator, 4 and 3, which is 7, and we just bring down the denominator. So the answer to 1 third plus 1 fourth is 7 twelfths. And the way we got that is finding the common denominator. Now let's just do one more. And remember, whenever you're finding the common denominator, make sure you have, let's put it up again, your multiples ready. If you don't have it set, you can just write it each time. And, and the continuation of writing it helps you remember, oh, 5 times 1, 5 times 2, 5 times 3, and so forth. But it does help just to have it handy so that you don't have to rewrite it every time. So here we go. Let's do one more real quick. If we were doing 1 half plus 1 fifth. Again, we need to find the common denominator. And we already know the way to find the common denominator, let's just do it down here, is we have 2 and we have 5. We have 2 times 1, 2 times 2, it's just 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And if you need to go further, we will. 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 3 is 15. Actually, we can stop because I believe we already found common denominators. There they are, right there. So the common denominator of 2 and 5 is 10. So as we did before, make a little space to put your 10 in. And in order to do that, we need to convert the 2 denominator to 10 and the 5 denominator to 10 and the whole numbers that we need to do that. You could say what times 5 gives you 10 or we know down here that it's 1, 2. So we're timing 2 over 2 is the whole number we need to convert that denominator. And up here, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2 times what gives us 10, and it's 5. The whole number 5. And the reason you're using the whole number is because we have to keep the like numbers. So we're doing what we do to one side, whole number. We do to the other side, a whole number. And that equals, equals, we already know that 5 times 2 is 10, and 1 times 2 is 2. 5 times 2 is 10, and 1 times 5. And let's just erase this. 5 plus 2, because we're adding the numerators, is 7. And our denominator carries down, which is 10. And we have 7 tenths. So any time you have a pair of fractions that have different denominators, what we need to do is multiple out the number. If, it's the, if the denominator is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, if the denominator is 10, 11, 12, you would do the same thing, which is 10 times 1, 10 times 2, 10 times 3, 11 times 1, and you would just factor the denominators out until you find the like number. And once you find the common denominator, you're going to take that whole number that it took you to get that common denominator and times it, and then you just add them up. And that is how you find common denominators for fraction pairs. And we thank you so much for listening to our lesson today, and we hope that it was helpful. And I just want to leave this little picture with you, and I really suggest that you make this for yourself and then have it handy and every day kind of just go over it to remember your answers. And thank you so much. Have a nice day.